Hi, this is Jason from Smartermarks. Over the last four and a half months, or maybe more as you're watching this, we've worked to develop an online assessment tool that lets you seamlessly transition between paper and online assessments. I'm pretty excited about what we've achieved with the help of our early adopters, and today I'd like to walk you through making an assessment available to your students online. Using our online tools, students can write assessments that include multiple choice, numeric response, and written response questions, including uploading photos to show work. They can do this from any desktop or laptop computer with a web browser, Windows, Mac, or other, or from a mobile device. And they can do it using a student login, allowing them to keep track of future and past assessments, or using a shared code or link. I'm going to assume for this video that you already have an assessment template built. So if you haven't done that yet, look in the video description for a link to our documentation and a tutorial video. Once you have an assessment template built, go to the Assessment Templates tab and open the template you'll be using. Make sure that your key and learning outcomes are set up as you want them to be. You'll be able to rekey after building an online sitting, but you won't be able to make other changes to the assessment from within a sitting. When administering assessments on SmarterMarks, each student receives a fresh shuffle, with questions and answers shuffled and randomized values calculated separately for each attempt. This means that these first three buttons, which we use to version paper assessments, won't be important here. Instead, we're going to go straight to Build and select Build Online Sitting. In the dialog that opens, we can customize the title if we like and choose a folder into which the online setting will be placed. If there are any warnings or errors for the template, they'll show up in this space here. When you've got everything set up as you like, click Build. Once the setting is built, we're forwarded to the settings. We can change a number of important parameters in this dialog. Over here, we can choose when and how the setting opens, making it available either right away or at a specified date and time, or with a start code that you can give to students when you choose. We can also choose to close the sitting and any attempts within it, either manually or at a specified date and time. Below that, we can choose to close an attempt if the student leaves the window. While this can be useful as a security measure, it's also sensitive to bad internet connections, so be careful about checking it. We can also choose the number of attempts each student should be given, whether the students will be shown the questions when they're given their results, which I'll check, and include a note that students will see before they write the assessment. For example, letting them know that they'll need a calculator. Finally, on the right, we can set a time limit for the assessment or remove the time limit and can define points at which a notification will let students know how much time is remaining in the assessment. I'm excited about the opportunity to offer more flexibility here, so you may see more options, particularly around what students see in their results and when, as we continue to develop these tools. I'm going to set a time limit of 15 minutes for this quiz, create a couple of notifications, and leave everything else at its default value. When you've got everything set up, click Save. We've got the assessment set up now and can always make changes using the Settings button here. On the right, the Assessment Template view lets you preview the assessment much as students will see it. This view can also be used to change the scoring of questions if that's necessary. To do that, hover over a question, click on the gray triangle here, and select Change Scoring. On the left, we have access to three other views. The Student Information view allows us to set up student access, and once students are writing the assessment, to view their progress individually. There are two ways to give students access to an assessment, by adding student accounts or using a shareable link. We'll go over both here. To add this assessment to student accounts, creating accounts as needed, click on Change Access and choose Add Student Accounts. As explained here, using accounts, students can easily keep track of old assessment results and will be able to see the dates of future assessments. To give account access to students, we need to enter their email addresses in the space here, one per line. When we hit Add, students in the list will see an entry for the assessment on their main page immediately, though they won't have access to write it until our settings allow. Students who don't already have an account will receive a welcome email containing a link that they need to click in order to verify their email address. If this email goes missing, they can click on Forgot My Password on the login page to have another sent, or we can use a shareable link to give them access. I'll add one student here, then click Add to set that up. On the left, we can now see our student listed. Students who have clicked on the verification link will show up with a green dot next to their name, like this. A gray dot means that the student has not yet verified their email address. Students can be listed by any information they are asked for, name or student ID, for example, using the selector on the left side, here. To use a shareable link, click on Change Access and choose Shareable Link. Both student accounts and shareable links can be used together if you like. In the shareable link dialog, we have the link that we can share here. 
Alternatively, we can also share just this last part with students. We'll take a look at using that in a moment. In order to use a shareable link, students will need the link or code, as well as an identifying piece of information, a student ID, for example. When we click Enable Link, we can see more detail about that. Here, we can choose an identifier. The identifier can be one of the name lines on the assessment or a custom field. I'm going to add a student ID here. Below, we can specify the allowed values. Students will need to enter one of these values exactly as shown to get access. I'll enter a student ID for our test, then click Save. That's it for the setup. Before we look at the last two views, let's log out and see what the assessment looks like for students. Students going to smartermarks.com for the first time will see a page like this one. If they click on Student, they'll get the student login page. If you're setting up a secured browser at your school, you can link students to smartermarks.com student to send them directly here. Here, students can log in using their email address and a password they choose after clicking the verification link, or they can enter an access code below. We'll start with the access code. I'm going to enter the code here, then click Join to go to the lobby. Here, we have some basic assessment information at the top, including any additional information we gave to students. Below, I'll enter my name and student ID. As soon as the assessment is available, I'll be able to click Start Now. Clicking Start Now brings us to the assessment. On the left, we have the time remaining and a map of the assessment, with the dots here filled in for any questions we've completed. On the right is the assessment itself. For multiple choice questions, we simply choose our answer from the list like this. Anytime a response is saved, a notification like this one will appear. Whenever a response is successfully saved, a confirmation is sent back to the student's computer. If for any reason that confirmation is not received, an error message will show instead with an option to retry. If a student sees the green banner, the response has been saved and the confirmation received. For numeric response questions, we enter our answer in the boxes given. The cursor will move automatically to the next box with each key pressed. For written response questions like this one, students are given the same editor that teachers use to edit items. They have access to basic formatting, lists, tables, image uploads, the equation editor, symbols, and code editor. I'll upload a free body diagram here for my answer. Once a student has completed the assessment, they can click on Submit at the top or bottom of the assessment to submit their attempt. If they just leave the page, the attempt will close automatically when the allowed time elapses or the sitting is closed. Submitting the assessment brings up a dialog that will include warnings about any questions that haven't been completed. If I click Submit and Close, I'm forwarded to the results here. On the results page, students can see their score on the assessment and on any outcomes that have been defined. If we allowed access to the assessment questions, they'll also be able to see those, along with marks for their responses. Going back to the login, let's take a look at account access. I'll enter my student email here and my password, then click Log in. On the main student page, you can see a list of assessments here. Students can organize these into folders as they choose or put them in the trash but cannot delete them. Our physics quiz is at the top here. To access it, I click on the quiz, then select Open and Start New Attempt to get to the lobby. From here, things proceed the same way they did when we used a shareable link. Let's log out again and go back to our teacher account to take a look at those final two sitting views. Any sittings we've built can be found under the Online Sittings tab. Sittings here can be organized into folders or shared through communities much like forms, templates, and questions can. To open the assessment we built earlier, I'll just double-click it. In the Written Response view, we can see that there are two written response questions in this assessment. Clicking on the first, we get a list of all responses that match these criteria here. By default, only completed responses which have not yet been scored are shown, and they're shuffled each time we select a question from the list on the left. To score a response that's being shown, just select a score from the drop-down here. A notification will let you know that it has been saved and that the student's results have been updated. At the bottom of the view list, the Sitting Information view allows me to see all students' most recent attempts in one view. Scores here and in the Student Information tab are up to date as of the last time the page was loaded. If you would like to see more recent results, click on the Reload button here to update them. The Sitting Information view also allows us to close and open the sitting and individual attempts manually using the controls here for the sitting and here for each student. Assessment statistics are on their way soon, as well as more options for what results students are shown and when. They may already be there as you're watching this. 
This tool, like all tools on Smarter Marks, is always being refined. So if you've got suggestions about what would make your online assessment work easier or more effective, please let me know at support at smartermarks.com. Thank you for watching.